Welcome to Electron Line. Here's the third of the three-part series on how to find the eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and to show that those eigenvectors are linearly independent and span the vector space. And this is the third part where we're going to show that the three, or I should say the two, vect eigenvectors that we found in the previous video are linearly independent and span the vector space. So first of all, we can show that they're linearly independent in such a way that there's no way in which you can multiply the one eigenvector with a constant to obtain the other eigenvector. So it's not a integer multiple or a constant multiple of the other vector. And that's easy to show because you can say that is there's, if there's some constant a in such a way that we multiply the vector 4, 5, and 0, there's no way possible to make that into 3, 0, 5 because there's no way that you can multiply a 0 times a constant to get 5. So that alone shows that they're linearly independent. But now how do we show that they span the vector space? Can we take a combination of these two vectors and obtain each of the three columns up there? And the answer should be yes if, it, if those two eigenvectors span the space. So let's see that. Well, first of all, let's go ahead and start with the first one. So we're trying to find a times 4, 5, and 0 plus b times 3, 0, and 5. And somehow we want to make that equal to, uh, let's take the one over here, 3, 3, and 1. Okay. 3, 3, and 1. Uh, I think I'll take an easier one first. Let's take the second column. Let's go 4, 5, and 0, because notice I have 4, 5, and 0 here. So if I let a equals 1 and b equals 0, that makes it easy. All right, let's try that. So 1 times 4, 5, and 0, plus 0 times 3, 0, and 5. That gives us, well, that gives us exactly... 4, 5, and 0, which is the first column in our matrix here. That's good. Now let's go for the first one here. So a times 4, 5, 0, plus b times 3, 0, 5 equals. So I'm trying to get minus 4, 5, and 0. Well, that means that a can be negative 1 and b can be 0, and I get the first column. So negative 1 times 4, 5, and 0, plus 0 times 3, 0, 5, gives me, oop, yeah, negative 4, negative 5, and 0. So that is the first column. So we got the second column, we got the first column. Now let's go for the harder one, the third column. And again, we can actually set up a system of linear equations and solve for a and b, but I think this is sufficient to see that it can be done. So now we're going to multiply 4, 5, and 0 times some constant a, plus b times some other constant, and that would be 3, 0, and 5. All right, uh, let's see. If I want to get a 3 here, if I make 8 3 fifths times 5 plus 0, that gives me 3 fifths. I'm suspicious, well, not suspicious per se, but I think that A should be 3 fifths. So let me try that. 3 fifths multiplied times 4, 5, and 0 plus, hmm, let's see here, I want 5 to become a 1. So if this is 1 fifth, 1 fifth times 5 gives me 1 because I have a 0 here, so I'm going to try 1 fifth over here. Multiply times 3, 0, and 5. All right, let's see if that adds up. 3 fifths times 4, that's 12 fifths, plus 1 fifth times 3, that's 3 fifths. 12 fifths plus 3 fifths is 15 fifths. 15 divided by 5 is 3. Second, I have 3 fifths times 5 is 3, plus 0 gives me 3. And 3 fifths times 0 is 0, plus 1 fifth times 5 is 1, gives me 1. And sure enough, that gives me 3, 3, and 1. And it shows me that those two eigenvectors do span the vector space. And so they're linearly independent, they span the vector space. It's a legitimate basis for that vector and this particular eigenvalue. Now, if you say, well, okay, how did you do that? 
I didn't quite follow that. You could make it into a system of linear equations. You could simply say that 4a plus 3b is equal to 3. Then we have 5a plus 0b is equal to 3. And then we have 0a plus 5b is equal to 1. So you could do the same thing by solving these equations simultaneously. You obtain the same thing. And it's actually not that hard because, first of all, you realize that here you have a 0b, so a is 3 fifths. And here you have 0a, so b must be 1 fifth. And so it's not that hard to show that they do indeed span the vector space. And that's how it's done.